The Borderlands movie just came out and already critics are calling it the worst movie of the year. Rotten Tomatoes has two scores, the critics score, which is a mere 7%, and the audience score, which is at 50% as of this video. There are many odd things in the movie that many claim makes it garbage or even just plain unwatchable, but is it really that bad? Eh, sorta. In order to properly criticize the movie, you have to really understand Borderlands 1. Borderlands, the game, is about four vault hunters who traverse Pandora and a woman named Patricia Tannis. Tannis was a doll researcher and she found out the vault existed. Atlas, who originally found the first vault and opened it on Promethea, tries to kidnap her and make her tell them about the vault because Atlas wants a powerful alien tech within it. Atlas sent the Crimson Lance, their private military, to Pandora which caused all to leave, sending the planet into chaos. Lilith, Mordecai, Brick, and Roland go in search of a vault. They need three more pieces to complete the key. Steel, the leader of the Crimson Raiders, is already on their way to the vault. They unfortunately open it before the other vault hunters can get there. A monster called the Destroyer kills the Crimson Lance once it's summoned. The vault hunters ended up beating it, but that's the general game lore. Just a warning, movie spoilers are ahead. Pretty heavy movie spoilers. So if you do plan to watch the movie, I'd suggest doing it before you continue this video. The movie is nothing like the game. When we start the movie, we first see Roland breaking Tiny Tina and Krieg out of a prison. Tiny Tina in the movie is a clone made from Iridian blood, and they think that she's the only one that can open the vault. Then we see Lilith, a bounty hunter, and she's not even on Pandora. She's on Promethea, where Atlas, the CEO of Atlas, approaches her. He then recruits Lilith to go get Tina, which he claims is his daughter. Lilith travels to Pandora despite her hatred of the planet she grew up on. She meets Marcus, who brings her to Firestone. Lilith repeatedly claims she isn't a vault hunter despite her being one in the game. Tina fights Lilith and gets Krieg to help, right up until Crimson Lance attacks, and then Roland, Krieg, Lilith, Tina, and Claptrap all escape to find Tannis, their contact. From there, they collect the key pieces trying to evade the Crimson Lance. When they collect the key piece, Roland gets left behind. The rest of the group almost dies in an elevator accident. That's when Lilith uses her phase shift, but everybody thinks it's Tina. Tina sees Lilith talking to the hologram of the Atlas CEO and throws a grenade at her. Tannis, Krieg, and Tina go to the vault's location where Tina tries to open it. Somewhere else, Lilith finds an old message from her mother, and Lilith realizes that she's a siren. Lilith goes to save everyone and they fight, and then Atlas takes Tina hostage. Atlas forces Lilith to use the key and put it in the slot, awakening her Firehawk powers. Lilith uses her new powers to free Tina. Atlas gets killed by the vault monster and then they leave the vault. That's pretty much the end. This movie plot is so vastly different from the game, it's just insane. The first thing that bothered me was Krieg. How did he end up in the movie so early? The entire reason that he was even sane was because of Maya, and she hasn't even really been introduced yet. Number two is, why is Tina here? The original plot, Tina and her parents were sold to the Hyperion Corporation for experimentation. Tina watched her parents literally get tortured to death, and then she escaped with a grenade. She wasn't even introduced until Borderlands 2. Number 3, Lilith. Everything about her just bothers me. She didn't know she was a siren, but according to the game lore, sirens get their marks from a young age. So she should have had her tattoos prior to touching the vault key. And it, why isn't she even a vault hunter? She was a vault hunter even in the pre-sequel. This guy? Captain Bear, he eats crime. Oh, we must be eating a lot with that big belly, huh? Hey, Angel, darling, what, what's that on your arm? Did you do that? Blue. I don't know where it came from. Do you think it's pretty? Yeah, sweetheart, it's real pretty. Hey, honey, can you get in here for a minute? I was correct. That was a memory from when Angel's powers first manifested. There are other items. 
Number four, I know it's super petty, but the characters are so unfit for their actors. Lilith and Tannis are just too old, and Kevin is just too silly to play Roland. I know Roland has some silly moments, but overall he's pretty serious. The other thing that bothered me was the vault itself. The gate was blue, and I know it's a silly thing to be irked about, but it's iridium purple. Number six, I hate that it was all set in the desert. There's more to Pandora than just deserts and stuff. And even if it was set in the desert, I feel like there should be more of those spider ant dudes, because they'd come out in a more desert setting. Now, this isn't to say the movie was horrible altogether, the movie had some enjoyable parts. I really did enjoy the guns and the scopes of them, like the little star scope. That's something that they actually have in the game, and I enjoyed them putting it in the movie. Just great attention to detail. I also adored the wildlife, but I wish that the movie shared more. That's like a really big part of the game to me. I really also loved the outfits, the bandits, and the ones in the caustic caverns. Those were really interesting outfits. My favorite thing of all, the absolute best and peak part of the entire movie, my favorite little annoying dude, Claptrap. He literally saved the movie. If it weren't for him, it would have been a thousand times worse. Jack Black is without a doubt the best person that they could have ever hired to play him. His inappropriately timed comedy like literally never fails to make me laugh. I'm pretty sure I would have been more critical of the movie without the little comedy in between. He fit Claptrap so well. Claptrap was the only one to stick to his real game self. He dances and sings, which is a big part of his character, like why Handsome Jack killed a bunch of the Claptrap. Just generally silly, inappropriate, funny jokes. It was just really entertaining. In the end, the movie wasn't good, but it wasn't terrible either. I took my dad to the movie, and because he's never seen Borderlands 2, he actually really enjoyed it. I feel like everybody who's disappointed is a previous Borderlands fan. We've been so greatly disappointed because we had high expectations for the movie. The comedy, like the mix of action, it just all blended together nicely. But if you've played Borderlands, it's kind of disappointing because it strays so far from the narrative of the game. I feel like that instead of trying to find people to fit the characters, they just hired whoever was famous and around. I feel like we need to stop putting these Hollywood people on a pedestal and start hiring people that are more fit for the role. Then I feel like movies wouldn't be so disappointing. I really honestly, despite how I feel about this movie, hope that there is a second one. If they do choose to make another movie, it would probably have to be about Handsome Jack. He's a beloved villain, he's a great villain. But they just can't keep it PG-13. It would have to be at least 17 plus because of how he acts. This is so frustrating. You see, this is what I don't get about you bad guys. You know the hero's gonna win, but you just don't die quickly. Man, uh, example. There's one guy in New Haven, right? City's burning. People are dying left and right. Yada, yada, yada. This jackal rushes me with a spoon. <laughs> a freaking spoon. And I'm dying laughing, right? So I scoop out his stupid little eyeballs with it, and his kids are all, Wah! and I, I can't even, oh, I can't, he can't see where he's going, he's bumping into stuff, and I, anyway, I don't know, maybe you had to be there. The moral is, you're a total bitch. He's literally like a psychopath, and that's like what people like about him. I really do hope to see a second movie, though. That'd be awesome. This movie, honestly, is not the same as I felt it would be for such a mature-rated game. Making it PG-13 honestly ruined it. But yeah, that's what I think. Just let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye.